All right, welcome to this video. Um, in this video, I'll be going over factors, zeros, and multiplicity of polynomials. So I realize multiplicity is a new vocabulary and uh, I actually don't like to go over new vocabulary too often in a video, but um, I think this, this idea is very, is simple enough that I can go over it and um, whatever you don't pick up, we'll talk about again in class. And if this is a, um, if you're coming in from another class, hopefully you've talked about it and you, this will help you get an idea of what you can do with multiplicity and, and why we would use it um, and hopefully make it a, a little bit easier for you to understand. So here are some things that we have to know uh, as background. First, any polynomial can be put into a factored form and we've covered that in class. We know that we can put it in factors. The fundamental theorem of algebra states that a polynomial will have the same number of complex zeros or roots as the factors. So here we see that we could have a multiple number of factors. And in class, we've seen how uh, we can see the factored form, and that would give us the number of x-intercepts. Well, sometimes it won't give us exactly the number of x-intercepts. We might have a less x-intercepts than, than actual factors, but the fundamental theorem of algebra states that we will have that many complex zeros, complex intercepts, and we're, we're not really going to use the word intercepts for complex numbers, but um, just know that x-intercepts and the word roots and the word zeros all mean the same thing graphically in that we're looking at where it crosses the x-axis. Um, graphically speaking, you can determine the x-intercepts and the general shape of the graph by using the factors that we've, we have. And we can also use the end behavior, which uh, hopefully you've seen the video on end behavior because um, we're going to use that in, in my explanation today. We really only care about the real zeros. So even though I said something about complex numbers, we're not really going to deal with complex zeros. Just know that when I talk about it really briefly, um, It'll be a, a just a, a brief, brief explanation because um, we're really concerned about the real plane and what's going on in the real numbers, not really the complex numbers. If a polynomial has a repeated factor, then that factor is said to have a multiplicity that's greater than one. And this affects the x-intercepts and how many x-intercepts we have. Now, I'm going to show you some examples right now about uh, of what is multiplicity. So if we got a polynomial, in factored form, again, we want these to be in factored form, not standard form. What is the multiplicity of the factors of each of the polynomial? So let's take a look at these examples. Now, I said that uh, we're going to look at the factors. The factors are here, x and x minus 1. So to determine the multiplicity, we simply look at how many times this occurs in our factor. We only have one that it doesn't repeat. We don't have an x. It's not an x squared. It's not an x cubed. We can look at the power as well. So the multiplicity of this factor is 1. The multiplicity of this factor is also 1. And this whole thing right here is a factor. Okay. So uh, if you think of the word multiplicity, multiplicity, the number of multiples you have. Okay. So let's look at number 2. Number 2, we're looking at the factors. The first factor is x minus 1, and the next factor is x plus 2. So how many times, if I were to write this out, I could write this out as x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 2. So what is the multiplicity of x minus 1? Well, the multiplicity is 3. The multiplicity of x plus 2 is 1. So we can even see, hopefully you're seeing here, that if we look at the power, that matches up with the multiplicity. Right? The power here is 1. All right, so what's the multiplicity of x? 4. What's the multiplicity of 2? Of x, I'm sorry, of x minus 2? It's 2. What's the multiplicity of x plus 5? It's 3. Okay, so that's all we're looking at. So the next question is, how many complex zeros are there? Well, the fundamental theorem of algebra, recall, 
says that there are the same number of complex zeros as there are factors. So here we have one, two factors, so we're going to have two zeros, two complex zeros. Okay, I'll put these in green here. This has one, two, three, four. So even though this repeats, this is going to have a total of four complex factors. Now, an easy way to see is to look at this power is 3. This power is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. So how many complex, zero, complex zeros does this have? Not factors, I'm sorry, complex zeros. How many complex zeros does this one have? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It has 8. All right, well, that's nice and all, but how many? We're interested in the real plane. So how many x-intercepts is it going to have? Well, we don't count the multiples for x-intercepts. So how many x-intercepts does this have? This has 2. How many x-intercepts does this have? This only has 1, 2 different factors. So this is going to have 2 x-intercepts. How many x-intercepts does this have? 1, 2, 3. 3x three intercepts. Okay? Alright, so now let's see what does this thing, what does this multiplicity do to the graph? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so what we'll do here is I want to take a look at the calculator and um, let's Let's put in a function. How about we put in x cubed um, times x minus, well, let's just start simple. Let's, let's change this to x cubed, okay? Well, actually, let's do this. Let's do x times x plus x minus 2. So we've got, um, we've got a parabola. And we know that in this parabola, we know that there are two distinct factors. And we're going to have an x-intercept at 0 and an x-intercept at 2. What happens if I change the multiplicity of one of these? Well, let's change the multiplicity of the first of the x to squared. So now it's an even multiplicity. Huh. Well, we definitely see that it does turn to a cubic, right? Because we have x squared and an x, so we have x cubed. So we have to go down and then up come from, our, um, from our talk of end behavior. And notice that it still has x and 2, but it only has two real roots. Okay? Because we don't count the... the we don't count the rip, repeat. So it only has two real roots, um, but it, it kind of goes and then it comes off of the zero and then comes back down and then goes up through two. What if I change this to a three? Well, we do know that this is now three, four. It's gotta be a, an even powered polynomial. So it's either, and it's positive, the coefficient is positive. So it's gotta go like this and like this or some way that we have the um, the end behavior going up and the end behavior going up. So let's see what happens. Oh, that's interesting. So now it goes through the zero and then comes back up through the two. Let's take a look at one more and see if we can come up with a an idea of maybe we can generalize this. Let's um. Let's say I change this to a square, and then I change this to a cubed. What do you think is going to happen? And we know that x squared and x cubed is going to add to x to the fifth. So we're going to have something going here and something coming down here because of the end behavior. Let's see what happens. Ah, it, so it comes up, it bounces off, it kind of bounces off and comes back down and then goes through. 
So let's try to put that in words and just kind of summarize what we've been doing here, okay? So let's go back to our PowerPoint here. And basically what I'm saying is that if the multiplicity is even, so if the factor has an even multiplicity, we're going to bounce off of the x-intercept. So that means here's our x-intercept at x equals 2. It's not going to go through. It's actually going to come down and bounce off of it, like a ball. Boom, boom, bounce, bong. Um, whereas if the multiplicity is odd, you're going to go through that x-intercept. So here the x-intercept is 0, so I'm actually going to go through it. So I'm going to go through this one because the multiplicity is odd. And I'm going to come back down and then boom, bounce off because the multiplicity is even. All right, that's it. That's all there is to multiplicity. That's really the trick. Um, we'll look at some examples in class and we'll, some draw, we'll draw some of these out. Um, I, I, if, you're not, if you don't have me as a teacher, then I hope that you go and take a look at some other examples and um, see if you can draw some of these and go to your calculator and see what they look like. All right, thanks for joining me.